All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the show. We are talking, continuing to talk about termites, right? Talking termite and bait stations. Yep. What the heck is that? Well, this is a hand, a hand drill. Yeah, I got a real drill. So, well, I am jealous. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll get started. <laughs> Okay, next, let's talk about, we talked about liquid barrier, let's talk about bait stations. There's a lot of controversy. I had to draw my house so it's nice and clean. <laughs> what, how does it work? How does, what's the premise behind a bait station treatment? So a bait station treatment, as opposed to putting a liquid barrier around, they're gonna put canisters of uh, bait around the home. And typically these stations are gonna be spaced every 13 to 14, or 13 to 20 feet. And what that does, it allows, so termites like to forage. And when they're foraging, they're gonna get into they these- They like forbs? <laughs> well, who doesn't? Uh, no, for, forage. Forage means they like, go out and look for food. Yeah, right? they're foraging, yeah. foraging through the forest, their forest, which is your backyard, right? And so these stations will be placed. Um, and ours are just like the liquid barrier. So when they get into the product, it's a non-repellent, okay? So they don't know it's there. They crawl through it and they take it back to the colony before they get to your home, right? That's that's the so it's it's kind of a barrier, but it's stations. It's it's stations, yes. It's like these are the watchtowers with the dudes and the guns, right? Basically, yeah. Kind of yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. So so we put the watchtowers in around the house, and um and this is this needs to be inspected annually, just like anything else, right? We've got to come make sure there are some spaces, right? So you've got. So then these are question marks for some people. You yeah, got these can, spaces. Can the termites just come in between them? The answer is yes. Right? Do they typically? No. Typically, they're going to want to get toward this product that we're, we've got here as a food source. They're going to find that first as we place it outside of the foundation. Yeah, why would I go for crappy three-day-old leftovers when I got chocolate cake sitting out there, right? Yeah, and we got a lot of chocolate cake in there. So gotcha. there's enough chocolate cake to take out uh, every termite on your property, in fact. <laughs> So let's talk about this. Yeah. So Dollars. number number one, we took off the board. We said it was expensive sometimes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pricey. It's costly. Yep. So is that the advantage to bait stations? Really, it is. You know, it, it, it's it's about half the price typically, uh, depending on the size of the home. Normal size homes about half the price, which is a so it's a buy one get one free basically. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, but uh, the thing is, is is the home is the biggest investment that most people are going to make. Yeah. Protect your home. You buy insurance for the car. You buy Mine's insurance free. for the house. Termites, uh, the force that they're so small, it's it's the, it's a silent uh, silent killer, really. By the time that you realize that you have an issue, it's too late and you're going to spend thousands of dollars. So we just recommend making sure that you're doing something to protect your home um, in our area because termites are so prevalent uh, here. Yeah, I've heard that they say <clears throat> that if you build a new house, some people think you build a brand new house, you're less likely to have termites because there's nothing in the wood. Not true. But they say within 10 years in this area, there's a 90% chance that the termites have gotten there. Yep, about 10 years. So a 10 year old house, it's likely that you have the termites that have found it. Because there's enough in the ground that they're gonna be there. So it's just a matter of them getting to your to your house, my pretty, pretty red house. So let's talk about how this works. So basically we have to drill a hole in the ground to fit this in, right? Yep. And then the termite station sits at ground level. So really all you're seeing is this instead of puffy green grass, right? Just are, are, section. Are, you gonna, are you gonna be able to mow over that? Yeah, you just mow right over the top of it. When we come to service it, which you should get it serviced every year, what we're gonna do is take the top off and we're gonna pull out whatever's inside and inspect it and see if we need to replace the product. So in these little canisters are actual bait pucks. So it's product that's in those. So that way I can handle it. I don't get it all over my hand, but it's got holes and areas that they can go in. The termites can get in there. They like it. And then they take it back to feed everybody else. And then it's game over. Yeah, so this is my key to get into it. Everyone is a little bit different. There are different manufacturers, obviously. This one is just the one that we chose that we feel is the best. Yep. You ready? 
Okay, so let's talk about bait stations. So we've grabbed what we think is the top of the line bait station. Let's take the cap off of it. So this is what a bait station should look like in our opinion. Um, and then I've grabbed what I think is the bottom of the line bait station, <laughs> which essentially is a piece of wood that you shove into the ground and that's part of the bait. The other part of the bait is this cellulose insert that termites would like to eat. So why, why would you put that around your home? I wouldn't, but the premise is you're drawing them to this instead of the house. And once they're there, then you know to put products down for them. That's the premise. What's the difference between that and this? Well, so this one, um, this one actually has active ingredients in it. So um, s similar to this, the termites are gonna for forage around and find it. But when they find this, they're gonna take the products back to their colony and it's gonna eradicate the colony. So where this is so just is bringing that... them to your house and it's just saying, hey, come, come eat this, it's good. The, the, and, and then they're just going to come and, and so this is an indicator it's an indicator this is still a treatment this is so this is a, a treatment and it will uh, again eradicate all the, the termites on your property so let's talk about real estate transactions um, okay Kansas, so that's that's typically when people are thinking about termites why well because you have to have it inspected to sell your home yeah um, and it's a requirement it's a requirement for the, for the loan and for the for the closing of the title and everything yeah, and so as a as a homeowner, you know you you're gonna have to spend money on your home to treat your home if you have an issue. So as you're going out and, and, and talking to these companies, there's companies out there that are just looking for these real estate transactions. Why? Well, because they can do a shady job. Uh, they can do a spot treatment. It's cheap, and they'll never have to talk to that customer again. So they're talking. They're dealing, to, they're dealing with the real estate agent usually. They're using. They're dealing with the real estate agent or the homeowner that's selling the home. Yep. So after the homeowner moves in and the new homeowners are there, they don't typically. You're not thinking about reaching out to these companies. Their their warranties anywhere from six to months to a year, depending on the company, um, and and the county that they're in. And they're really hoping that you don't call them. Well, the fallacy is, you buy a house, you say, well, the inspections, the termite treatments, all that stuff's done. I don't have to worry. I right. probably don't have to worry for five or 10 years, right? Wrong. And that's a fallacy because you never know what you got as far as inspection or treatment. And maybe you need to be paying more attention to your house since you just bought it. Yeah, so typically those companies for real estate trans transaction are going to use the repellent products. Well, they're gonna go for the cheapest price. Absolutely. If I'm, if I'm selling my truck, and it needs a fuel pump, I'm gonna get the cheapest fuel pump because it's not gonna be mine. Yeah, so a couple of things that we would recommend on that aspect is making sure that you ask who the company was that treated it, making sure that you get that paperwork and warranty information. Hold them accountable to that. And also with that, you should be able to renew it, uh, a warranty with it. If they're a reputable, reputable company and they did a good treatment, they will allow you to renew that treatment uh, at a smaller price. Uh, annually to make sure that your home is protected. So you've already paid for it once. So you might as well keep renewing this. So real quick, your home, you get a treatment, the companies are gonna offer an annual renewal, which basically means they're gonna check and make sure things are good every year, give you peace of mind going forward. Yep. And if anything were to happen, then they'll have to come and, and, and take it care of it. It should be on them. It'll be on them to take yep. care of it at that point, yep. So let's move into some other things on, on some of the, the shady things we've been seeing around the city to help some people out. Okay, so pitfalls. We've talked about what to watch for if there's a real estate transaction. We've talked about some differences in companies. We've already covered inspections. We've already covered um, paperwork, what you should ask for, what you should get. Now let's talk about, as far as products and service, what differences there are, what you should look out for. We talked about the liquid barrier. Don't let them do a spot treatment. So with bait stations, here are some of the shady practices. And I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but this is, this needs to be out there. So a bait station, when properly placed, will work, right? Yep. Most brands are gonna be very similar. So there's different opinions on who to use and what to use. 
the main thing is you've got to make sure that the paint station is allowing protection for the home. In order to do that, you have to check it. You have to put the right products in it. It needs to be active. It needs to be active and it needs to be monitored. So you have to do your annual renewals, otherwise they're no good. So with that being said, what happens? Some of the cheaper companies will go and put out baits that will draw the termites in. This is the this is the thing that bothers me most about bait stations and why, why would you want to draw termites to your home? So this is a literal bait and switch. I don't have the best handwriting, but that's okay. I do have the best termite product. So this is a literal bait and switch tactic. What they do And I'm going to use this as an example. It does. It's not made for this bait no, station. No, and they look exactly the same. They look just like this. Yeah. Actually. So this is this is what our puck looks like in ours. Imagine a puck full of this stuff. Right. So it has no active ingredient. It's so just it has a no, cellulose product. No chemical. No product. They fill it. They put it in here. Why do they do that? Well, it's considered monitoring. And so the bad thing about this is, is well, the good thing is, is they're monitoring your home and you're paying a price for that, right? So you're paying whatever these look like. I don't know if it's quarterly, uh, biannual, however that looks, but they're coming out and they're looking at them. So then they're, they're baiting to your house. And when you do get the termites, say so they they're going to come them, out and check. They're, they're going to open it check. up. Yep. They're going to pull out their cellulose pucks and they're going to say, ah, there's oh. termites in there. So guess what? Now what they do is they will bring real product they'll put it in your bait station and they'll charge you more right so you're getting you're, you're having to pay for the service twice and the way it's pitched is we're not going to put expensive products out to waste them until you have a termite problem but basically they're creating the termite problem by, by baiting them in so we know they're in the ground we know at some point they're going to get there let's get them there quicker so we can charge you more money up front it's it's what, what needs to happen is Get the product, get the get the non-repellent, get it active, and take care of the home. Don't keep. By the time that the years go by, they find the product you could have had it already paid for uh, twice over. So we see this a lot where they're the expense of the monitoring system is is well, yeah, I mean, equal to what it would almost cost just a little bit more to have the actual system installed. Uh, let's give them some examples. So my house right here, typical house is going to cost maybe. Let's say twelve hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars for a full liquid barrier high end treatment. So what's it gonna cost for good bait stations with chemical in it? Uh, probably about seven hundred. Seven yeah, about seven hundred. Let's say seven hundred, so six to seven hundred dollars. Yeah. So like half of that. What's it gonna cost to do bait stations with just cellulose bait? It's probably around three ninety nine. <laughs> So that's the problem is you're you're if you go for the cheapest price, you may end up paying in the end. So well, don't forget. So this is just the initial. This is an initial installment, Ben. So this yep. three ninety nine is a one time fee, and then you also have to pay for them to come, to out, come out and check. And when they come out and check, they're going to charge what? It's usually about two fifty. I'm seeing. So let's about say two fifty a year to come out and check. But if they find termites, then it's going to be plus new chemical. Right. So it'll be two fifty plus whatever it costs to fill them up. Six seven hundred dollars. We're not sure what that costs, but it's it's several hundred dollars. So if you're gonna go with bait stations, find out how much their annual is, and make sure that that includes all of the chemical. Yeah. To make sure you're protecting your investment. So that way you're not getting hit later. So you're expecting to pay two fifty, but now you got to pay four hundred and seven hundred or whatever. And to that's get more the product. bait and switch. That's, that's the problem. problem. Yep. Okay. Let me cover a couple of other problems that happen with bait stations. Again, there's technician error, right? Human error, absolutely. Human error. So let's put bait stations around the house. Mine were prettier than yours. Yeah, well, mine are bigger. <laughs> so they put bait stations out. They're coming out and checking them to service them every year. What happens if they're not the one that did the house. They don't know where they are. And the grass has grown over a couple of them. Well, you're gonna have to install new ones. 
They're, well, they don't know to check them. Right. They don't put new product in them. They don't make sure that it's upkept. So these are basically null and void, and any termites that are coming may not get close enough to one of the other stations and they'll find their way into your home. <laughs> so technician error can happen and you want to make sure and limit that. That's why liquid barrier, there's not a lot of technician error. Once it's placed, they come out and check and they see if there's termites. So bait stations can be broken, they can be missed. The neighbor comes in and trenches and takes one out and you've got to make sure that they're still there, that they're they're properly so that, that's a great point. So how do we how do we maintain a home so that way we don't miss uh, stations? So when we go out and do a treatment, if it's bait stations, we're going to obviously diagram the house and we're going to map where we're putting them so that the next technician, whoever it is that comes out, can know exactly where they are and, and how many. service them and, and how many. That way he's prepared with the right amount of product and everything. So let's recap real quick. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're getting, if we're getting a bait station, that we're having a bait station with an active ingredient. Yeah, not just a bait. Correct. Um, also, uh, be, be wary of real estate transactions. You know, always make sure that you're looking into that if you're buying a new home to make sure that you have a reputable company that comes with a warranty for any termite treatments that may have been done on your home prior to you buying it. So really, our focus today was just to give you some ideas of what to watch out for. Because there's people, no matter who, what company... They're in it to make money. So what I'm suggesting is that you find somebody that's going to make money, but they're also going to do it right. Yeah. You know, you always want to make sure you're you're doing business with a, a reputable company. Um, that's what I always recommend. Um, you know, check the reviews. Check your company out. Make sure that um, you're seeing what they're about before you decide who to, to go to business with. And hold them accountable. If they say that they're going to come every year, make sure they come every year. If they're going to replace products in your bait stations... Make sure that they're doing that. Um, Inspect what you expect. There you go again. I got it right this time. <laughs> okay, so stay tuned for next time. I don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we, we're going to start a new series, right? Yeah. We just don't know what it is yet. So, till then, I'm Ben. I'm Kevin. And we're the Pest Control Guys. See you later. Wow, it sounds like you got it going on. It's the pest control guys. You have to say something, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, and I got a big auger. Wow. So this is you to put them in the ground and if you <laughs> control guys. How you doing? <laughs> uh, no, you were doing great. <laughs> That's something that it kept screwing it up. Um and then lastly. Get lost. Hello, everybody. It's the Pest Control Guys. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Was I wrong to laugh at that? No, it's huge. huge. That's what we're going to cover today is bait stations. Looks like you got a little one. Well, you know, hey, you know, that's how that goes, though. But uh, might be little, but it's mighty. So it's mighty. Cool. All right, stay tuned. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Mr. Gertz, to you. Should be you, my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're just jealous. Some treatments. Termites. So that's why we have our drills ready. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Once you get the giggles, it, you, it's really hard to get over it. All right. Get your game face on. Okay. Sometimes we talk too much, don't we? I have that problem. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I <laughs>